I made this video last night when we hadn't been attacked fully yet. And this morning I woke up to the news of war and I don't know what is happening to my mom. I can't call her. I don't know what is happening to many of the people I love. The only thing I know is that the Ukrainian army is doing everything they can and we need your donation more than ever. Once you tried living free, you can't live any other way. Hi guys, my name is Katya. I'm coming to you all the way back from the Ukrainian countryside and today I will discuss with you this very uneasy topic of are we going to leave Ukraine? A month ago, my colleague asked me an uncomfortable question I'm trying to ignore. What should I plan for in case of war? I'm trying to listen to what people around me are saying. Maybe they have a plan? The more I think about that, the more questions I have. Will I have to run? Will I have to fight? Will I be fast enough to reach the bomb shelter? And there are no answers still. To not panic, I bought a few cans of fish and an axe. I think I'm failing with the plan. In all the books about the war, I read people survived because they were lucky. I hope I'm lucky. Hope we all are. When two years ago we watched a British TV show called Years and Years about potential future that 95% of Ukraine was captured by Russia, I was outraged by this story. Neither did I enjoy the actor who played the Ukrainian guy and spoke Russian with some kind of Arabic accent. Not with the new Russian laws. When a month ago I first heard the news about American intelligence research that Putin was apparently going to invade Ukraine, I was rather doubtful. Not that Russian army never invaded before, in fact, they took away Crimea, my favorite part of our land, in 2013, and they started a war in Donetsk and Lugansk regions. Check this out, I'm living in China and my best friend is from Donetsk, and obviously in summer she wants to visit her family. So she buys a plane ticket going through Istanbul and then getting to Donetsk airport directly. Donetsk used to be a big city, an awesome city. Even Beyonce sang there at EuroCup opening in 2012 at a big ass modern stadium. And then the airport in Donetsk becomes a hot military spot and our Ukrainian army is trying to protect it and the Ukrainian men are dying there. My friend's airplane is redirected to another Ukrainian city and she has never been home since. How would you feel if you could never go back home? We have 1.5 million people in Ukraine like this. The people who can never go home again. Being a shiny hopeful butterfly I am, I keep on living in my little bubble in the middle of nowhere in the Ukrainian countryside until one day my boyfriend buys a whole lot of food in the supermarket and now we have a storage of food of just in case. And then it hits me. My dream was to build mud houses on our property and have people come over here to rest their soul and to meditate together. Ruined. My dream was to have our children walk on our land and pick plums from our garden. Potentially not gonna happen if we have to run away from our home. I decide to be a grown up and we make a plan. We need to get another vaccination. We need to have all of our paperwork in place. We need to vaccinate our dog and prepare his paperwork for leaving the country just in case. I asked my Polish mom if we could stay with them if we have to and we plan to fix our car. Do we want to leave? No, we want to live peacefully on our land in our newly refurbished home that I never actually shared the videos of refurbishing it with you and I don't really know if it still makes sense. Every day I get messages from friends around the world who let me know that I can stay with them. I am very grateful for your messages, but I want to stay at home. Tony Robbins says that if our need for significance is not satisfied, the easiest way to satisfy it is to put a gun to someone's head and then you become the most important person in their lives immediately. That is what Putin is doing to our whole nation. Man, there are so many ways to feel significant, like start a YouTube channel or something. I really don't want to hate anyone and I really don't want to be scared and I don't want to run away. Every day I ask myself, what's great about this? And you know what? I do find answers. 
I feel more alive than ever. I feel very grateful for the peaceful sky above us. We as Ukrainians are very united. This war helps us stay strong together and crystallize our identity and our integrity. And here I want to share with you the words of Andriy Fedorov, because I couldn't say it better than him. Ukraine has already justified itself as a state and a nation. We are 1500 years old, but we are a startup. We have an incredible future ahead of us. And we get stronger with every threat, with every step Russia takes towards our independence. You can't perform an abortion 30 years after the conception. It would be called a murder. Because the child has grown up and will fight you. The point of no return has passed. Freedom is a choice we made in Ukraine in 1991, in 2004, in 2014. We make this choice daily. Once you try living free, you can't live any other way. Once you try living free, you can't live any other way. I will leave some links under this video where you can donate and how you can support us in Ukraine. Together we stay strong and we are very grateful for your support. How we come out of this defines our generations ahead. Now, do a loving kindness meditation for Ukraine with my voice. I will leave a link to my meditations down below. And remember, always, only you decide how bright you shine. Continue shining brightly. I love you.